Thursday, April 18th. Uh, we have a, uh, we've been told we have a, a short agenda, but we're not done until we're done. Okay, good. I will. I'm going to have three selectmen present, all three, and we have the town administrator, the cooling secretary, and Mr. Leo Martel, a recording for the town at large the public. Thank you, Mr. Leo Martel. And now, gentlemen, we have old business. I'll start with the uh, minutes. Motion to approve the regular minutes of April 11, 2019, as amended. I'll second vote motion. Was there any discussion on those minutes, gentlemen? No. Hearing none. Very, very well written. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Non-public, so we had to go through the first one. Uh, number one was the uh, in regard to the tax collector. And, uh, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve the non-public uh, minutes of April 11, 2019, in reference to the tax collector, because I don't have any uh, time on those. Mike, the time on those minutes was 6:31. I'll second by motion. Any discussion on those? Mm -hmm. They were not amended. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second set of minutes, Dave, you'll be so kind. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the non-public meeting minutes of April 11, 2019 for the town clerk. And time on those. 651. 651. Second. Any discussion on those gentlemen? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Last set of minutes were regarding um, no, there, there uh, two, two more, two uh, more transfer station for next one. Okay. So I'll make a motion to approve the non public meeting minutes from April 11, 2019 for a transfer station supervisor at um, 8 12 p.m. 8 12. Any, I'll second that. Any discussion on those? No. All in favor? All right. All right. You want to do the last one, Bob? Yeah, just a second. I'm just saying yes. Okay. And a motion to approve the non-public minutes of April 11, 2019, uh, with the selectmen and 845. Eight, at 845. I'll second it. And uh, any discussion on those gentlemen? No. Hearing none. All in favor? All right. Well, that takes care of the non publics for the next three months, right? Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say you capture the essence of the non public spirit. <coughs> they were detailed, but not detailed no, over, over, over detailed. Okay. I'm going to open up to a public comment. We have, uh, Nate, do you have anything for us? Yes. Uh, I didn't receive a call or any questions in regards to my proposal, so I'm assuming that it looked well. Well, I it, that's it's a it's not anything that we budgeted for this year, um, so I have taken the proposal and put it into our building and maintenance um, folder that we maintain for the different departments that request things that need to be repaired during the course of the year. And in the event, I would think that if, uh, in the event we get towards the end of the year and there's any funding remaining, I would probably bring it up to the selectmen for uh, review and discussion. I don't know that they're, we're looking at, we hadn't even intended to address acoustics or sound in this meeting room at all. How do you feel about that? I mean, I, ha I have the proposal. I plan on holding on to it, but did you want to review it in detail? Well, I, I think the thing is, um, what we haven't done is um, we have the, um, <coughs> two pending things: the library, we, the library support structures, which is a, we don't know where that's going to fall as far mm -hmm. as dollars, and then also the fire station roof repair. We don't know where that's going to fall for dollars. Mm -hmm. So we have two major projects we, we don't want to let go this year <coughs> and maintain. We have enough money for those two main projects, um, and then we can start letting go some of the uh, some of the more. Uh, 
nice to do projects, but not necessarily immediately required. The problem with the fire station, the, the leaks, there was some, there's some leakage in there. And the problem with the library is uh, it needs to be brought up to cold to 20, 20, 21st century cold. Yes, I, un I understand the, those can be cost costly. Um, I would re withdraw my proposal. Okay. okay. It was only valid for like 30 days or so? Or? Well, the I heard that there was an issue with noise, so I thought I'd, I'd price it accordingly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in the construction industry, prices go up over time, and okay. I don't like working. And losing money. Yeah, you can't maintain that yeah, no. for a, for I, a I long think period in, of time. In the event no. that it were to be brought up, we would then ask you to rebid it or review it to make sure that this is still a good number for them to consider if they're going to do that. But I can return that to you. That's not a problem. If noise becomes an issue uh, again, <laughs> then uh, certainly reach out to me. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the price is general scope of work. Uh, if the price goes up, maybe we do a little less work. Fair enough. No, that's so noted. That's very good. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to close public comment, bring it back to the board. <coughs> um, I've got a bunch of mails, mailbox items here, and uh, I just go through that initially first since there's nothing per se on the agenda, but the mailbox is full. I like to just re uh, I'll, I'll reserve my report on the, the, the uh, planning board meeting until later in my section. but. Um, Got a note from a uh, letter from DOT just talking about uh, maintenance in District 5, which includes Dunbarton, of, uh, approximately 4.3 miles. I'm going to do some shims on the uh, paver shims, uh, Mansion Road to north of the 77, so that's on the way to your house. Bob. And then we're uh, the Dunbarton and Dunbarton and Bow, just a uh, paver shim. What's a paver shim? What down that is? They're talking about just shimming yeah. a small amount of pavement on top of the existing code. Okay. Uh, Liam, could you pass this to the, uh, give a copy to uh, both Jeff for information and okay. for the police department so they know there's going to be work being done? Yep. Okay. okay. I can do that. Pavers, Mike, are generally much thinner about the normal pavement. They tighten the screens right up and they hardly put anything down. But it's just that shit was off. The the off. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you replace the following spring. Okay. All right, we had a, uh, a death of a, of a long-time resident. I just want to say uh, Mr. Frederick Mills, 90, died uh, April 9th of 2019 at Concord Hospital. Uh, his obituary was, in the, uh, was the, um, in the newspaper. He's, um, he was well-known uh, well by a lot of people, did a lot of work with the, um, uh, the American Legion in town, as I understand. Yeah, and the Historical Society sure. is a long-time member of them. Sorry, you there. We're going to spread them all yeah, the spread. <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, what do you mean on? Uh, we got a note, a uh, great information uh, email from Woody, just to bring them up to speed. It seems like uh, our truck is in Canada uh, via Michigan. Um, but there's a holding lot. They're just trying to, they have trouble getting it down here. And he's still keeping, in, uh, keeping tabs on that. He's got a few repairs there. The recycling center roof probably needs to be looked at. Did you see that one? Mm -hmm. um, and the staffing, no new applications this week. And then he had some time off. And um, I know when, when we talked with, um, with uh, Woody last week, we were considering uh, the possibility of um, two weeks, uh, cutting it down to uh, one day, I mean, two days instead of the three days. And I'm looking at the possibility of the August 3rd through the 6th week, that week in August, the 3rd through the 6th, and possibly around the 4th of July. Um, and so uh, uh, we might want to, could you draft an email? Those are the two weeks that we'd be considering. We've got time. We're not there yet. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, uh, to be fair to the residents, we should probably want to notify, uh, let residents know, let, notify that maybe on the, uh, the marquee, the website, and maybe a, a sign down there if we are going to pursue that. And, uh, so basically, it would be an advertising advertisement that there is staff shortages and that um, <clears throat> it'd be the week of uh, July uh, July first through the fifth, probably that Wednesday. They we're talking about the July third closing, and then in August would be uh, the week of the twelfth through the sixteenth. I stand corrected. 
uh, probably the week of the 5th to the 9th. In August? In August. Or the, or the 12th or the 16th. I would leave it to uh, uh, Woody to see what she would recommend to us. I don't want to micromanage it. I think he can come up with some ideas. But uh, just run those proposals. I, I think we're in consensus with the calls on a Wednesday. I was considering Tuesday, um, but the problem is we have commercial hauling for a lot of residents. That would really uh, would put a, a cringe on, on those other days. I think as long as we put notice in advance up there the week prior to that, you know, okay. But I think that's uh, one, one, way, one way we can help Woody. And uh, we don't have to make a decision on anything right now, but I'd like to get more input from him. But those are like proposals. Any other comments, gentlemen? What are we doing? No, and again, I want to appreciate, you know, Woody is uh, notifying us in advance and keeping us in the loop with that information. Right. <clears throat> okay, we have a... A uh, note from uh, Judy is more of an information note regarding uh, how we do tax liens and uh, no action on this. I think it'd be um, worthwhile a good reading material so we at least become familiar as we go forward with that. I think we still have two outstanding um, properties that may be in, uh, I'll put it there at risk for we'll being we put liens on. All right, we got uh, two notices from the Admin person, admin Donna, and admin out of a planning and zoning. Uh, one uh, is considering a. Um, you should have copies of this in your. I asked them to make copies for you. Of this, it's not straightforward. It's it's uh, it's, it's it's difficult. I think uh, I like to call the on this particular one. Um, so the date of the twelfth. <coughs> date of the twelfth, April twelfth. Okay. Uh, property owners want to build in a, in, into a, uh, a subdivision. Uh, they have a of a lot, but they don't have row frontage per se. And uh, there's, a, there's a question about the row, uh, how, how, how do we proceed with a, with a road and what are the requirements they should have for the road. And, but there's some historical perspective that I, I think the road agent should chime in on. We do have a... a policy that the selectmen have adopted for building on a class six road and it has to be within so many feet from a class five road mm -hmm. um other than uh, when it exceeds that if the person comes before you and you feel that they don't meet the criteria then you uh, they might be um asked to go before the the um zoning board but typically um the a property that's a lot of record um, has the rights to have um, some sort of development for reasonable use. It's just determining whether they fall under the threshold of the selectmen or the threshold of the zoning board. I'd like to um, maybe for next week or the week after get a copy of that for us as well as um, I noticed in reading this on some of the prior subdivisions there was actually the land before this had requirements to build up to, it looks like, class five standards mm -hmm. um, on the road. So this particular section of road might actually um, already have some some issues with it that, you know, if there's gonna be building beyond that, it needs to be brought up anyway. So if they're beyond that length of road, I think that we should look at these prior subdivisions, see how they all laid out and read the notes from them. <coughs> And then, uh, and then address it at that time, take some time to thoroughly go through it. And just to remind the board also, I think we've gotten ourselves in a, a little bit of a bind in the past. Um, the uh, legal recommendation is to always make sure anyone that's given this authority to build on a class six, that they sign a waiver that yeah. they hold the town harmless. And there is a, and that gets recorded with the registry of deeds. So that's- That's why for fire protection, correct? Right. Fire and emergency, emergency in case the yeah. road's not cleared out yeah. in winter use or yeah. mud season. Yeah. So there's all those little things that we need to make sure. It typically them. changes their insurance levels on those yeah. houses too, mm -hmm. so they should be made aware so of So I'll that. get the policy and I'll also get the RSA that talks about. Um, Could, uh, I mean, were these uh, applicants or owners uh, in a, in a uh, urgency to get this, uh, get an approval to, from the town or what was it, do you know anything? I don't believe so, but again, um, I'd like to do my research because I think it falls under the criteria where you have to give uh, so many days public notice. They have to pay for the notice. Um, but during our preliminary well, work, let's we get the, get the facts. Yeah. So if we get that stuff. Yeah. But what I'd really like to read is these prior subdivisions on the property. 
I'd like to look at the subdivision layout okay. and the notes on yep. the This one here, yeah. Let's Not just the last one, but the prior ones also, just to read through them quickly. So anyone that had a subdivision on this particular road? Yeah, because okay. I see it looks like there's three so far. Okay. okay. Uh, Donna could probably facilitate bringing those in. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and then road agent can all come. We could have a, like a, a work session. Uh, uh, yeah, just to review this stuff, and then and then we'll come back and look at making the recommendations. Rather, you gave a vague time. Let's get a time certain on this. When we have a public hearing, when's a public hearing for the uh, fees? Well, this you could probably discuss this during the public hearing we have holding for the road, which is May second. Road improvements. Um, after the, after the public hearing. Public hearing for the fee schedules next Thursday, and I just want to make sure that if. Let's get. Let's get. I'm thinking that we don't have enough time to review everything before the May second deadline. Do you think? I, I, it's two good solid. Two weeks. Two weeks two out. Weeks. I can get this to you guys for next early next week. Okay, so if you want to do that, we can. Okay, great. All right, now the, the second one from the building department. Um, we have a, compl uh, a complaint from Wiser resident complaining about another resident having um, uh, too many unregistered vehicles stored on the property <coughs> and within close proximity to the street. And obviously, there's been some work on that. Um, and it does look like they're making some headway and talking about maybe sending a a letter to them asking for a hard hard date to remove the cars. It looks like there was some volunteer time by the end of the summer. Right, but the thing is, um, you saw the video. I mean, the uh, overhead video. I did. It's uh, there's not just a few. There's a lot. Yeah, twenty plus. <laughs> yeah. And. Uh, some of the vehicles, Mike, it looks like from the letter, are used at the racetrack down at Sugar Hill, which would be allowable. Absolutely, because not, not but, technically road vehicles. Right. But the other ones I definitely um, do fall under our, our classification. So I think that I think that's going in the right direction. It sounds like they're going to send a, a letter out. But if they're looking for direction from us, we do have a town ordinance to have only two non unregistered vehicles per lot. Mm -hmm. And I think that we should maybe send a copy of that with a letter from our building department and have it start there. And ask for a time certain. Ask them for a response, uh, you know, a hard response back from them. Right. And a time certain when they can uh, possibly have a completed by Something they can be held accountable to because if we don't take steps as a town, it looks like the the homeowner can oversee it and bring it to the courts that's complaining about it as well. As well. Um, Bob, what's your, what's your thoughts on this? Well, you know, I, I sit across from a similar property, so taking some kind of direct, I'm looking at the the, uh, the times of timelines here that they've had, and uh, I guess as long as there's a definite as to when some of this is going to be done with some kind of assurances. Okay. Yeah, it you looks know. like this, most of it started in March, but it was most recent Age right, April 10th. that they're doing their uh, their research, you know, so. Yeah, because it's easy to say you're waiting for the price of metal to go up, but if it doesn't go up, you got to still do something. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, okay. Bring it to a commercial lot to store it if you want to. Yeah. Okay, so the action we want to have done. Yep, send the town ordinance, a copy of the town ordinance with right. a letter from the building department and ask for a response in writing with the time certain for uh, completion of yeah. that plan. I think that would be the first start. Consensus? Because yeah. when I was reading this too, the guy has a, an automotive business in Manchester and I don't think we need him to warehouse mm -hmm. materials out here to bring the Manchester to do his work. Okay, well, we, we, I don't think we need to beat him with a heavy stick. I think we just need to this stuff bring it to his attention and get him back. Yeah. I think we should start in that direction and see how it works out. Okay. They, they all said what action item we yep. need? Yep, yep. All right, that kind of goes uh, that's the That's my copy. Oh, okay. that's the original. Lee, do you have a copy of the first one? No, actually, those were the originals from the mail basket. 
Okay. But I can give them to you, make copies for you. Yep. you uh, but I'll leave that in the basket. Yep, that's fine. Sir, talk about server now. Is we have a server quote. Yeah, um, I just want to forewarn the, the selectman that I am looking into a new server. Um, the cost for uh, the server is going to range uh, in the $4,500 range with labor of up to like 18 hours. I did reach out to another individual in town that um, we have met in the past that does this kind of service and his response was that this type of um, he would not be interested in, in quoting this because it's it's too sensitive of um, a job. There's a lot of um, from you need familiarity with the software that the town uses and um, where we already have an IT tech company true, that true is life. yeah. Um, fortunately, the fr the drive on the one that we currently have um, one drive failed in the first year, which was covered under warranty. And they have a three-year warranty, and we're in our third year, and another drive has died. How so, old is our existing server? Uh, five years. Um, and they typically, the end of their life is seven, eight years if you're lucky. But the uh, unfortunate thing with this particular server, along with about nine of our computers, is they're come at the end of 2020, they will no longer be uh, supported by Microsoft. So it's something that I will be revisiting with the board. I do have about uh, $4,600 in the um, non-lapsing um, warrant that I proposed a few years back that expires at the end of 2020, which I'd like to use to um, purchase this and then uh, look at my budget closely to see if I have enough money to go with the... Uh, no, just this... We're looking about the total of six grand there, right? Oh, six, okay. It's Where's our server? Where's our server? It's working? in that back room in yeah. my office. <clears throat> and then look at it um, next year for uh, either a warrant or a budget increase for the um, And if that server was to crash, does it lose a lot of files or are they backed up? They're backed up in the cloud. Um, but what happens and what was noticeably happening last week is that we have a real uh, drag in our, you know, the, what we can do with our computer. Mm -hmm. Things tend to freeze, you get bounced out, and it's all because there's one of the three drives that's starting to fail. And fortunately, they, they caught it before it completely failed, whereas the other one <coughs> failed and we were in um, dire straits to get that replaced. But they they respond pretty quickly. With you them. know, I don't know if I want to wait long on this one. I would rather... No, I'm, I'm not interested in waiting. I, okay. I'm letting you know that I need to buy a server. Okay. Um, um, it's the hub of the town's business, and we need to stay up and running. That could almost, if you ran out, if you didn't What's have enough money... What's the total on it, Mike? What's the total on it? 69.11. I, I recommend we she, uh, expend the rest of her warrant item. <coughs> the uh, yeah, outstanding... <coughs> Uh, money that's been uh, put aside for it, yeah. and then you know even if we have to take out a maintenance money, that's maintenance. What did we put in the budget for? Um, I have some money for computers. Com I know you said something. Yeah, about it's money. mostly computer support, but I think I can f look at my numbers and, and come up with a little bit of it. Um, We're talking. Well, I'm, what was the amount of money left over in the year? I think it's in that folder. I want to say it's around forty-six or forty-eight. So yeah, we're talking. Folder. We're talking about maybe uh, twenty-four hundred. Right. Right. I'd be willing to expend that out of maintenance if we had to. Yeah, but we do have one on a line on some computer. Right. Right. But it's, right. You know, maybe use half of that. Yeah. I'll, money that I'll you definitely look. Can, yeah. uh, and the thing is, I should probably run in the red on that budget line just so you can see a true. Uh, expense yeah. of what that is, and then bottom line operating budget. You'll know that we, can change we have, the year. you know, spent down uh, a little bit more in, in certain areas. So what she's saying is use up the money. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Leave a little in the red. At the end of the year, we can look at it and say, okay, what, what do we need to do in this department for next now, year? Now, we in this particular one, we have a contract with this company. They're going to be working on our software. I don't think we're necessarily required to go out and get strange uh, additional bids <laughs> on this. I, it's you are not going to get anybody uh, unless they can pick up the entire package right. and, and become yeah, I don't a new. I think it's over the budget either. So I, I'm I like to make sure see if we get consensus tonight to go ahead and authorize Lean to uh, uh, <coughs> expend the money and uh, make it happen sooner than later. Yeah, because it will take time. They have to order it. They have to customize, build it, configure it. Then they have to get it in here, and then and it's going to have to be during probably <coughs> off hours when we're not using it that much. They, yep. Yep. That's why I, I see a Saturday install. Yeah. But then again, we have people work Saturdays. 
Uh oh, you don't have to. So the server out of this is forty three hundred, and then there's his labor the hourly rate of eighteen hours. Yeah. yeah. And that's the maximum. If they come in under, they would you know, obviously. I don't see any. Uh, I don't see any problem, especially with <coughs> some of the funds already set aside. So I'll make a motion to approve the bid from True North Networks in the amount of $69,11.57, um, of which $4,927.18 will be used out of Warren Article Number 14 for computer equipment to fund it and the balance to come out of Lane's uh, office equipment budget. Office equipment budget. <coughs> Second. Uh, any further discussion? I'd just like to say, uh, Lee, will we get any credit for the uh, for the hard drives, which are brand new, that just recently installed, what happened to the hardware that's already on there? Can they re reuse those hard drives in there now? They're brand new. No, it's it, it's really designed completely different from a regular computer. And it's an older system, too. Yeah, okay. it's already so, almost obsolete for it's you know what you can do with it. It does have value uh, to it, so um, I'd like to see if they would give us any credit at all for it, for it as okay. far as junk parts. Okay, I will ask them. Well, it doesn't look to ask. Bob second the motion. I know. I was just discussion time. Okay. Yeah, but I just want to make sure that any residual value when we capture from that. Sure. And uh, any. Because any, obviously, what they typically do is they will strip it. Right. Make sure that there's no data that anybody can. Right. But hard drives are, <coughs> you know, you know, they can. I don't know how big a hard drive they have in there, but the thing is, hard drives can go for a couple hundred. On the outside, even if you get two hundred dollars for it, it's better than taking it out to the transfer station. Mm -hmm. Is it okay for somebody to have our hard drive information? You, the thing is, before you turn it down to the, you take a hammer to it and hammer it. <laughs> Seriously, and then you give it. To them. Well, you can wipe it clean, but if you there's two ways of destroying a hard drive, physically. No, what or, I'm saying if we yeah. sell the hard drive, well, then we would ask them to wipe it. Yeah. 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 Um, hmm. I thought those could never be wiped 100%. Oh, no, I, I think I think it's something. If it's smart enough, they Just make sure that we don't give up the information that way. <laughs> I think that's, they actually tell you this when you, it's, it's getting rid of something, make sure you don't sell the hard drive because. That's the only can, piece they give back. They can recover some. Mm. I was going to say the hammer. Oh, it's loose. Hammer it and then try and sell it. That's good. No, but this process is in there. Okay, um, I'll take a vote now. All in favor? Motion on the table. Lean, go ahead and uh, execute this. Okay, I'm going to open up for public comment. Nope. Nothing. You've heard of the hammer thing on the hard drive? Oh, yeah. Okay. But I don't think you're going to get much credit for it if you do. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, anything else for the Okay, I'm going to close public comment. I'm going to bring it over to Dave. You're on, you're on board, Dave. Okay. This week, Bob was nice enough to uh, let me go to the uh, Town Hall Restoration Committee meeting as an alternate to him uh, for the Selectman's Rep on Tuesday the 16th. I met with the board after our non-public meeting, and we reviewed a bunch of ideas and went over their agenda and... Uh, they're working on developing a much smaller size addition to get a Lulu, which is a elevator type system, but a much cheaper version of one with a staircase going up to the second floor. And uh, they're originally looking at just um, the left hand back corner to put it in. And after some talk and some discussion, um, in entering the side of the building there by the stage and then having to walk all the way down the edge to get to the back of the crowd if you were um, filling the building. We did talk about maybe trying to move that smaller building on this end of the building only for the fact that you'd enter at the same location by the stairs and come into the building. There was some discussion about the emergency exit having to be a certain amount distance apart from each other. And um, I had talked with him and reiterated that, you know, we may do something with this existing emergency exit just to make sure that we can maybe use the building over the next several years um, as like a uh, temporary upgrade to that to make sure that we could 
maybe use it for 50 people and under functions. So they thought those were good ideas. They're going to look into that a little bit. We talked about uh, funding for the architect to do some very, very preliminary drawings. And um, they are going to use money from their, their um, programs that they have there and save money on that. I told them some of the items that we were looking at doing were lighting and outlets on the second floor. Um, upgrade of electrical panels we spoke about. Structural repair of the roof, um, possible emergency exit repair and roof on that, and a sprinkler system, and possibility of looking at the drywall ceiling to make sure that you know that was done and, and still looks favorable up there. So more maintenance items that we were looking at that when the building does become functional, um, it's not additional money they'd have to expend, and uh, they were very very happy with. Uh, you know, the board's out, outtake of that and look forward to working with us on anything and maintenance items. Can I ask a question on that, Dave? Yep. Um, one of the biggest complaints we had or lack of, of wanting to resolve the issue is the alarms kept going off and they, the comment that came to us was that it was too cold. Are you guys looking at heating systems? Or? Well, uh, John had check the sizing on the heating system and the existing heating system will heat that entire building even though they're not doing it now oh. will heat the entire building to like a minimum standard it doesn't have excess heat some real real cold days it probably be, would be struggling so um, uh, I, the know, heating system will be looked at I would say but probably not in the early stages oh, okay if there's a certain alarm uh, knocking, they uh, making it sound off. Yeah. I mean, the sensor is making it sound off due to the temperature. I would rather um, bring an alarm system to cut that part out as a temporary measure and relocate. I it think it was the one at the top of the stairs, Mike, which has to, I think, be functioning. Yeah, yeah. we haven't had any problems since January, have we? No, no. I haven't heard of any. No. We just, I think, we just monitor that as we go forward. Yeah, but I think. Uh, you know, even though they're not heating it up there, mm -hmm. the system has the capability to heat it. John said it was to the minimum size. So, um, good. they're going to look at maybe sliding that addition around the building and instead of paying an architect, as you've seen John help us with some of the electrical things in here, John is going to take his CAD system and do some temporary drawings to get an idea of what it will look like on the building because he's going to scale out all the windows and the building size and structure they're going to check where the septic comes out and make sure that that manhole cover doesn't get covered by the new building. They were talking about putting their new building on a slab. And I let them know that you can most likely not put an addition that size on a slab that's attached to a building with a full foundation. You can put a half foundation, a half wall on a footing, but not a slab because you can't attach it to buildings like that. So. They're going to look at the two different areas and then come up with a summary after they look at how they attach to the buildings and what they would look like. And they're going to use John's capability to get them further along instead of paying an architect to do some very simple drawings. Very good. So the meeting went very well. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, most of what you know we've been emphasizing, and it's uh, you know the the different approaches we've had from people has been just the maintenance of the building and making sure that you know for, for instance if there's a fire mm -hmm. we have fire suppression or and it is uh, problematic especially you have to go upstairs because something's going on and you don't you have, have lights light, yeah. you know mm -hmm. i mean you got one little light if you go up a ladder and get up into the attic you know so i mean right it, and their focus is on bringing down the scale of what they wanted uh, so that it's still something that's functional for the town, but that's where the use of their money comes in. Yeah. You know, that's that's what we had to uh, de de alienate with them is that, uh, you know, your money's used for the improvements, our money's used for maintenance. And so, uh, you know, I think we got a pretty good reception because there are some things that need to be done that would have to be done then we're going to have to incur the expense anyhow. Yeah. And so we might as well. They had made a list of... So I actually got sense. the minutes from Margaret, and mm -hmm. I haven't printed them off yet, but I will be posting them on the website if you have a minute to 
look at their tab to see, okay. you know, because I'm sure it has all that information right. you guys discussed in that. But I think that, you know, the, the whole board there felt rejuvenated that, you know, at least on a maintenance end, you know, at least the town is looking at that and we budgeted money for it too. So that was, you know, a step this select board took to start looking at that building and, you know, trying to get some use out of a very nice building that hasn't been used a lot. Well, it's a nice meeting room. We're quite very spacious. Nice, yeah. Okay. Anything else, Dave? Uh, the only other thing is John's also going to do some follow-up and checking on the state and town level. Um, you know, minimum 50 people and under what, if, you know, because minimum codes. existing the minimum, minimum codes that we can use that building now as we try and do these maintenance upgrades. He's just got to make sure it's listed as a historical building, not necessarily yes. a modern building. Yeah. Because I think there are different codes for mm -hmm. it. Right. <clears throat> you do too many upgrades, it becomes a modern building. Well, if you remember... When we went to the uh, election seminar and we went to Franklin, the Opera House in Franklin, Absolutely. which has town office buildings in it, mm -hmm. but they don't have an operating elevator to get to the other floors. Right. We walked the, the stairways up. We went to up two floors, mm -hmm. uh, but they were allowed to use it because they didn't make any uh, major improvements. Major improvements to it. You know, all chain alterations. Right. But and John even said something to me, like the handrail going up the, the, the curve in our library, yeah. it doesn't mean cold, but to make it mean cold, all you have to do is put a, what some historical buildings will do, they'll put, leave it in place and put a brass uh, uh, handle that follows the curve on the way out. Yeah. Right? And so I thought John was pretty... Uh, the grippable handle. Yeah, grip, yeah, that's what it was. Okay. Anything else, Bob? That's it. Okay. Uh, to me, just planning board, um, Central Regional uh, Planning came to the planning board this week and they... Uh, our project uh, and the priority list was one away from the money to doing something in Page's Corner. Mm -hmm. By uh, in other words, remember I said if you don't play, you don't play in the game. You don't, you know, no chance of getting anything. Uh, next year, priorities and other projects could supersede us, depending upon how they go. But the commission, deputy commissioner, was talking about financing, how to get more money, and one thing they were talking about is raising tolls across the state because even though we have more cars on the road and more um, vehicles on the road. The gas rev gas tax revenue is going down because the cars are too more efficient, mm. and uh, so. But they were talking more about money. But as he was talking about money, he just happened to mention Page's Corner in Dunbar doing those. Brought, made just wanted to made a point out of it. So we did well and bringing the, we're number two in the queue, one away from the money, as I said. Mm. And uh, so next year it's a whole new ball game. Yeah, we it's amazing we're that far up so quickly. It is, and so it's good. Um, you see, that's all I had. I'm going to go to lean. I don't have anything. Just busy okay, in my I office. I one more thing. Okay, I'll buy. Um, I did make a call to Jeff Trexler today to find out and get an update how he was. I haven't heard back from him yet, but I did want to let the board know. Okay. I'm reaching out to him now. We kind of gave him that break he had asked for. Okay. And uh, I'll start following up on that now to try and get that going. Great. Okay. Um, nothing. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. Not quite record. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.